Welcome to the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Vantage Circle, the simple and AI-powered rewards and recognition platform for employee engagement. Welcome listeners to another enlightening episode of the Vantage Influencers Podcast. I'm your host, Sanjeevani Saikya. Today, our journey is intriguing as we spotlight a pivotal yet often underestimated aspect of professional life, and that is workplace socio-psychological dynamics of people integration. In the hustle of deadlines, it's easy to overlook how social and psychological factors shape our work environments. However, acknowledging the interconnected nature of human behavior within the professional realm is essential for creating resilient workplaces. Exploring workplace socio-psychological dynamics, we uncover the hidden threads that weave a thriving workplace culture, extending beyond surface-level matrix. So join us as we explore the significance of these dynamics with Sanjeeva Mehthani, Vice President, Performance and Rewards, HR Technology, HRSS and Global Mobility at Jensa Technologies. Hi, Sanjeeva. Hello. First and foremost, I want to express my gratitude for your presence today and for taking the time to be part of this episode. Before we delve into today's topic, socio-psychological dynamics of people integration, could you kindly walk us through your corporate journey so far? Sure, Sanjeevni. Uh, I uh, have around 30 years of corporate experience uh, in various areas, most of which in is in HR. Uh, I started my career as a total rewards professional and then moved on to managing performance uh, across the globe for uh, a software organization, moved on to United Kingdoms to manage the Europe HR operations where I managed not just HR, but also managed the overall operations and then uh, came back to India to manage HR business partner for Capgemini Financial Services India. And in 2013, I joined Zensar where I am managing five functions globally, which are rewards, performance, HR technology, shared services, and uh, global mobility. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing your journey with us, Sanjeeva. Really appreciate it. With your permission, I'd like to now delve into today's topic. Sure. Yeah. When entering an established team, individuals encounter certain interpersonal challenges that extend beyond the initial goal fitting. And it's pretty obvious that these challenges profoundly influence an employee's integration journey. Um, I believe Recognizing and understanding these hurdles laid a groundwork for addressing the complexities of assimilation within established teams. So, um, according to you, what are some of the biggest interpersonal challenges that employees face when trying to integrate into an established team? So, what's your take on that? So, uh, we have to remember that uh, each team uh, which is established goes through the usual uh, process of you know forming norming so therefore uh, once uh, they are established a new member finds uh, settling in the team difficult because of uh, various reasons one uh, he or she has to understand what is the team culture whether the team is uh, you know result oriented process oriented uh, who has what kind of personality, what is the communication style, uh, do they look at a new joiner as somebody who is going to come in with uh, new ideas, add to the diverse uh, interactions within the team, or they look at that person with apprehension or like a person who is going to challenge their ways of working and are they you know, more focused only on work or they are also uh, focused on building relationship along work, 
do they have a informal environment do they have a formal environment so there are so many things that the person has to understand before uh, they can become uh, important and irreplaceable cog in their entire wheel that is a team yes so it, it is it is uh, uh, not not so easy for somebody to just go in and start contributing from day one interesting um as team integration involves a complex interplay of various factors uh, say from cultural nuances to individual communication styles um it becomes imperative to grasp how these elements intertwine to mold the integration journey for employees in your experience how do you think uh, things like cultural norms communication styles and different personalities impact how well employees integrate and uh, sanjeeva perhaps more intriguingly can these differences ever be leveraged for more cohesion no what so something that i have uh, experienced uh, you know in all my years of working in an it services organization where there is a lot of you know offshore on onshore interaction in fact the entire indian it services is built on uh, you know the additional price impact that india brings the additional innovation impact that india brings but what people forget is that india is not one culture you know people in us think you know like us is one culture or uk is one culture you can expect india also to be one culture but within india you know, people with different cultures like you are from northeast you know yes. the culture of northeast is completely different yes. uh for example i have seen you know people uh, my friends who are from you know nagaland mizo northeast area they find it very difficult to speak bad about anybody you ask them to you know discuss about you know how that person is not doing great uh, they will find it very difficult <laughs> they, they will never talk about you know what's wrong with a person so for, it's, it's part of the culture you know uh, they it takes a lot of effort for them to actually come out and say you know what um, this guy is not the right person for this team these are the issues with him uh, same thing with south north so the cultural norm of uh, the region from where the person is uh, cu- the culture of the organization and sometimes uh, you know within the organization the cultural norm of the team uh, makes a huge difference on how the em- employee can integrate uh, and when i'm talking about uh, you know culture of the team it's also about you know formal versus informal uh, open versus hierarchical empowering versus controlling so there's a whole uh, lot of difference between how a person who is coming from a empowering culture would find himself or herself struggling in a, a culture where you know it's always controlled by the person at the top so uh, same thing with the communication style right uh, we find uh, very funny when we hear people from you know kerala or bengal or punjab or gujarat uh, speaking heavily accented english right <laughs> i have worked in a french organization capgemini where you know all the people from headquarters were french and they had no issues in speaking in heavily accented french english in fact within england where i uh, i stayed for four and a half years uh, scottish and welsh accent is very difficult to understand but uh, nobody points it out people understand that's the way of uh, that person's communication style as far as the region they are from and you adjust you understand you accept you adjust uh indians in general have this uh, tendency to be slightly in having an inferiority complex so therefore we keep pushing people to you know uh, improve our accent and you know make sure that you don't sound you know uh, heavily accented manage your uh, style of delivering uh, then you have a, a culture of Yeah, people managing work through emails versus phone yeah. you'll find that in organizations you if you want to get work done don't depend on emails you know uh, in a lot of indian organizations uh, people uh, expect you to call whereas uh, you know multinationals so europe uh, you go anywhere uh, if you send an email that's as good as picking up the phone yeah. but it's a huge difference right uh, in a lot of countries uh, unless you build a relationship 
you know you can't start a conversation with anybody without first you know talking about the weather and about the game that was played about you know the the big movie or the latest sitcom and then come on to the actual uh, you know uh, topic of discussion so you know the style of communication is so different germans like to germans and dutch likes to be uh, very very direct and uh, indians and japanese who think that you know it's very rude so these are uh, so many differences that are inbuilt and uh, the idea of, about you know trying to change and then managing your work is uh, something that uh, no longer works and has never worked you can definitely uh, leverage differences because organizations have been leveraging this uh, to such an extent that they have created a huge difference between how they are creating delivering and succeeding the key thing is uh, you have to first of all be very inclusive which means you set the tone uh, very clear about you know what is the purpose of the team or of the organization and the idea here is to be uh, to achieve that purpose and everything should be aligned to that purpose and the purpose can be achieved uh, in a much richer way in a better way if there is diversity and we have to explain to the team as to why diversity is important why people coming from diverse backgrounds can you know add more value how their way of thinking can bring in ideas that a homogeneous environment will never come up with uh, but it also brings with it uh, uh, lots of difficulties and therefore we need to ensure that as a team we are open to accept the differences and work through it and some of the ways you can do that is you know be patient understand that everybody is di- different because of their background because of their inclination and therefore they have to be given a chance to listen you have to be open so most important thing is you know be open to receive without judging ask questions to understand right? you don't listen for the sake of listening you listen to see where the person is coming from you ask questions to clarify not to prove a point uh, yeah. the whole person you know, try to understand the whole person what makes a person why is a person so different from you know uh, me what makes a person tick you know be curious what drives her why is the communication style that way why is the personality this way and try to build connections and then you will find out that you know what you should think is basically uh the issue of, of the person it's not an issue of the person <laughs> because that person is having the same problem with you mm-hmm. so it's not a great thing and once you understand and work through that you should also be open to change your own style because if you want others to change uh, it should start from you right yeah. so then you will realize that the reward is like so many times bigger than you expect from a homogeneous team it's not to say that you know you don't require homogeneity homogeneity is required Uh, when it comes to you know having respect for individuals building on each other's inputs encouraging others to share their ideas having the back of your team members this is has to be homogeneous this has to be consistent this is where you can't be diverse mm-hmm. but in all other ways you should be because that's the only way to be different be better and uh, grow much more faster than anybody else true uh, sanjeeva do you think uh... having proper diversity inclusion initiatives in place is itself enough to address this issue uh, because there are certain companies where uh, they do not have an established uh, dei policy happening r- 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 at this particular point in time but their culture itself uh, makes it e- either difficult or easier for people to assimilate so what do you have to say about that uh, see i'm a big uh, fan of uh, culture which i believe is the uh, one of the least uh, uh, understood and practiced uh, area of hr or of corporate world besides you know uh, accepting that the only infinite resource you have with you is people so giving most importance to people and culture is what everybody should be doing which unfortunately not many are doing see if you have a culture uh, which is built upon you know respect for 
people uh, empowerment uh, risk taking innovation like freedom with responsibility uh, excellence it automatically will force you to adopt ways where you have to go for diversity see if you have uh, an open culture right you and you want innovation so innovation comes through empowerment it can come only if you have many many ideas you can get many many ideas only if you are willing to invest in that diversity and uh, you can only get more ideas from diversity if you have respect for people which means you pay more attention to ideas and not who brings the ideas so uh, another way of looking at it is uh, collaboration right if you have a big culture of collaboration that can only happen if you understand what will lead to collaboration and what uh, kind of collaboration is going to drive your organization so if you have a culture that respects people that understands that uh, you know everybody brings with them uh, a solution to a problem uh, that impacts their work this initiative become part of your life it's 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 there in each and everything you do right from the leadership who acts as role model when it comes to diversity because they are living all these values to the junior most person because he or she sees everywhere everybody living those values so for them it is not about something that needs to be part of their goal it is something that they breathe day in day out seconds minutes in minutes out so you don't need it as an initiative if your culture is built upon those values which celebrate diversity because that is the only way to have more innovation uh, better uh, resilience to manage uh, tough conditions uh, nothing more can help you than that yeah true again i think you'll agree that um... seamless integration into a team isn't just about joining it's more about actively contributing and feeling a sense of belonging so that way integration plays a critical role in shaping employee satisfaction and engagement within the workplace so it would be great if you could tell us why is integration so important for things like employee satisfaction engagement and again retention rates and uh, on the flip side what ripple effects might emerge within the team or or the organization if new hires encounter challenges while trying to integrate effectively so your take is going to be very important for our listeners yes so uh, i think uh, if you look at uh, the fundamental of uh, any kind of relationship be it uh, within two individuals or entire team it's uh, built on trust yes right and trust comes when uh, one you deliver what you commit two you know that somebody has your back three uh, there is an understanding that uh, this person is you know coming to office because his purpose in life is uh, you know one getting uh, career growth in, in this organization uh, two uh, pursue uh, his uh, other important uh, areas in life have a good work life balance uh, not get too stressed out uh, support from colleagues so there are so many things uh, that make somebody you know come to work every day and uh, you know look forward to how they can make a difference uh, to their life and to the life of everybody they are interacting with uh, it's a myth you know that uh, client is the most important uh, you know element of any organization uh, it's always the employees you ensure that you provide the employees a fertile culture where they can you know think on their own where they can you know do things on their own you just tell them what you want and not how you want it you empower them you know you help them understand you know how they can learn from each other they will automatically take care of everything else you know you don't have to worry about quality you don't have to worry about uh, your company uh, adapting to the latest development in the technology 
the competition nothing will matter so long as uh, you ensure that this happens and therefore for uh, this to happen you have to also ensure that people understand that anybody joining the organization anybody joining the team is going to become part of that community that family and it becomes their responsibility to ensure that the new person is taken care of you know the assimilation is as seamless as possible yeah in india has a very famous sanskrit uh, you know saying atithi devo bhava right a guest is like a god True. and any new person joining your team or joining organization is like a guest you not know, till he becomes part or till she becomes part of your organization your team for initial few days few months treat the person like god you know ensure that you understand you know why they have joined the organization uh, and what is it that you know they have not experienced till now that you can ensure that they experience and realize as to what they have been missing in their life and not just work life but also in their personal life so right from uh, you know in, uh, even before joining letting the person know that this is a team you're going to work for these are the people who are going to be your team members uh, this is a little bit about them you know what are their areas of expertise uh, how do they like to work do they you know like to work late nights early mornings do they enjoy you know breaks in between uh, what kind of hobbies they are into so that the person even before joining the team he has a you know mental picture of you know uh, how each of his team member uh, would be you know in terms of interaction and once they join uh, they meet these people and they already know them right it's then about uh, you know ensuring that uh, they understand what is their role in the team and what is where do they fit in the big picture and why are they uh, doing what they are doing which is the purpose you know purpose of why you come to the office every day it's a it's a much bigger responsibility for the managers to uh, ensure that uh, the person is welcomed uh, there is a one on one done to make the person understand you know what is the working uh, style of the team or what what are the things that the person if they adopt will make them successful what are some of the things that they should you know be aware of because they are not unacceptable they are unacceptable uh, part not part of our culture or the or the norm similarly all the team members are also made aware about the new the new joining as to you know what are the likes dislikes what kind of style the person has so you know everybody is walking you know two three steps toward each other and uh, they are meeting halfway through so that is something that uh, makes a big difference uh, there is a study that shows that you know 50 to 70% of newly hired managers and leaders fail at the new jobs and leave within 18 months imagine at that level if people leave within 18 months the kind of impact it going to have on the entire team on the entire organization and it's just because we do not spend time and energy in making them person you know as simple as you know feel at home where they can not have any fears of uh, exposing themselves being vulnerable where they know that people will support them because it's a new environment for them so are, are we providing that support are we making them feel that you know to be very very romantic you know loved they need to be loved for them to give back love to interesting them. again you have shared a very interesting viewpoint of uh, atithi devo bhava that's considering uh, the new joiners is god literally until they have become a core part of it that again bestows a sense of responsibility for all the team members to make them feel included don't you think oh yes yes of course uh, you know it's it's always the receiving people who have to ensure that since they are majority they have to ensure that the lone minority uh, does not have any apprehension does not have any fear does not you know uh, have to think twice before opening up and sharing his or her new points uh, you know made to be feel you know like a member inseparable member of the team yeah wonderful moving on to the next question how does a well integrated and diverse workforce contribute to an 
organizations' adaptability in the face of changing uh, market landscapes. And uh, Sanjeeva, it would be great if you could share instances where workplace integration has directly influenced the company's ability to innovate and thrive in dynamic environments. Um, given the multifaceted nature of team integration, application in real life scenarios really help understand uh, it better, I think. So how would you like to go about with it? Sure. So let me uh, quote a study by Howard. Yeah. So there's a study which uh, defines uh, diversity as inherent, which is your gender, ethnicity, sexual orientation that you're born with, and one which is acquired, which is gained from experience. You know, for example, if you work in a country, you understand that uh, you cannot directly approach a woman and try to sell a woman product. Right? So that's the experience that is acquired. So now they call it uh, 2D diversity. So what the, what the research done by them has proven that companies with a 2D diversity in at least three areas in each of these dimensions are 45% likelier to report their market share grow over previous year and 70% likelier to report that the firm captured a new market. So that's the kind of impact uh, a well-integrated and diverse workforce can you know, have on any organization. Now, the big question is how, right? So, you know, in what way can it happen? Uh, so innovation, as you know, is unlocked only when ideas are heard because ideas are everywhere. Uh, India, unfortunately, is a country where the education system kills the curiosity of children. And the curiosity is number one requirement for innovation. In fact, even parents keep reprimanding the kids not to ask so many questions. But that is the most important element of innovation, right? Yeah. Number one is asking questions which lead to ideas. And number two is it should be heard whether it's outrageous or whether it's coming from somebody who has no relationship with that uh, area, it doesn't make a difference. What is important is you have to value the difference. Differences are to be celebrated. And this is something that a well-integrated diverse workforce contributes. Right? The reverse is also true. You know, If you are not well-integrated, then it's proven that there is less chances of a idea being accepted from a woman or from a LGBT community member or from juniors or even from a new joining. It, it is just, you know, laughed off saying, hey, you know what, you, you are coming from a different organization. You have no clue. This won't work. Without even hearing it, without even trying to analyze it. So one of the most important things diversity teaches is, is to be open, listen, you know, and try to understand as to why the person is is saying uh, or where the person is coming from. Uh, let me give you an example from uh, Zensar. Sure. So we acquired two organizations a few years back when uh, we went on a drive to move from a traditional IT services organization to become a living digital organization. So we acquired Indigo Slate in US, a digital marketing agency, and Foolproof in UK, a digital design company. Now these companies are, you know, uh, normally called studios. One, they are small. Uh, big difference, besides being small, they deal with chief marketing officers and not with CIOs or with the vendors. Then they have smaller projects or smaller values, but they are working on cutting-edge business area. Uh, their projects are also of small duration. The interaction they have with clients and users is much, much more than what a traditional IT services company can have. And uh, this we realized at the time of uh, acquisition that we need to make them understand as to why we have hired them. And they need to you know, internalize that and uh, accept uh, that it's a marriage that will benefit both of us. So while uh, you know uh, they brought in their expertise to add value to the chief marketing officer, to build the brand, to uh, create experience, uh, they were st uh, struggling with you know expansion because they didn't have the India story. So we could 
uh, help them in growing fast, building a larger team in India with which they could, you know, collaborate and start delivering much more, uh, you know, bigger work or, or more work. Whereas uh, they could help us uh, in the downstream job, right? You help the client in creating uh, the user experience but then uh, on what will that entire platform set? How will the platform be managed? So we need, we had to understand that we let them manage uh, their own way. We did not touch the way they incentivize their people, the way they uh, managed their team meetings. Uh, we just ensured that they understood and uh, how we are going to add value to them as they are, they are adding value to you. So what happened was, uh, now we had uh, joint teams going to the uh, client and and coming up with a joint proposal wherein we talked about how we could you know impact uh, their reach through the digital organizations through the digital marketing agencies and how our it uh, engineering services could help them build the infrastructure to handle the entire thing globally so if we, if we would have, you know, stuck to, you know, we have acquired you and therefore you have to follow our ways or they would have told us, hey, you know what, uh, you don't understand, you know, our business and therefore just do what we are saying. It won't have worked. We had to understand as to, you know, why they are working the way they are working and how, uh, how they are adding value to the client and how we are adding value to the client. So what has happened is... Uh, through this collaboration, uh, we have managed to transform client business. So there is a, a large payments technology client where they had, you know, 400 different sites across the globe, which were giving a, you know, different set of experience to different people. It was not consistent. There was, uh, you know, issues with respect to the way people were experiencing it. Efficiency was not great. And what we did was we transformed the entire uh, 400 sites into one uh, digital experience platform and did a design studio implementation, which resulted in 25% reduction in the drop-off rate in customer engagement, 30% saving in time spent creating new campaign and microsites, and a 25% increase in operational efficiency through self-service on digital channels. Similarly, we helped one of our largest retail client in US to move from a huge disparate product portfolio to a cloud-based mobile-first platform while enabling it to expedite time to market by reducing the regression test cycle by 90%. So this was all because, you know, a joint effort working together, understanding the diverse way in which people working in two different organizations across countries look at solutioning, look at client problems, and then coming together and sharing their own viewpoints to come up with a common solution, which was much, much better than what we could ever come up with on our own. Okay. So Sanjeeva, we are arriving at the end of today's episode. But before we let you go, there is one last thing that both our listeners and I would love to know your take on. I hope you'll agree to the fact that integration within a team isn't solely confined to work hours or tasks. It extends into the fabric of workplace culture as well, social interactions, and even physical office spaces. Acknowledging the significance of these elements, it is imperative to know what types of workplace uh, social events, office layouts, and most importantly, company cultures are most conducive to helping employees from diverse backgrounds integrate? And um, more importantly, what strategies or improvements could be implemented within different workplace settings to enhance or optimize these integration opportunities? So, yeah, so if you, uh, you know, look at building a relationship, that's where, you know, social events happen. You know, how do you know the person? So, uh, you know, right from having uh, these informal team meetings, to creating uh, hobby communities where you have people with uh, you know common interests like photography, movie, marathon, cycling, trekking, and they all come together, uh, exchange ideas. Uh, they even you know uh, go to you know events together. Uh, having events 
uh, it could be you know inter function inter project or you know inter account sports events dance events um, i have seen a lot of companies even have master chef challenge uh, social work is a big big uh, item that plays a big role in nowadays especially gen z always feels that they have to play a bigger role yes in the way the entire you know climate movement or uh, impacting the society is concerned so uh, office parties uh, you know people think that uh, you know it's just uh, you know free food and free drinks but it's also a place where you know people connect uh, you know a lot more deeply than they might connect anywhere else similarly within uh, the office uh, do you have space for you know sitting and having coffee at leisure while going through magazines and just chatting a library where people can you know sit and uh, look at common interest you provide uh, you know games facilities right from chess carrom table tennis uh, besides having you know uh, guilds and communities on uh, the functional area of your organization so for it do we have a java community a design community a agile community as your community so uh, basically is there uh, an avenue for people from diverse areas from diverse hobbies from diverse interest to come together and ignite their passion uh, because once you know a passion in any area is ignited the person feels more lively more energetic and uh, they can then give more and uh, if you have to have diverse people you need people to give more so that they can take uh, time and effort to understand similarly uh, you know open office is a you know big thing right now but uh, do we even have uh, places where people can sit on their own without any disturbance there are a lot of people who love to be on left on their own and work because that's their best way of functioning they are most uh, you know productive yeah. if there is no disturbance so uh, we should acknowledge and include you know it's not just for diversity right it's also including yeah, everybody's inputs before you you know design the workplace uh, don't put too much focus on any one single person uh, small things like you know having ramp as well as stairs uh, having doors which can open uh you know by a close fist or by a push of leg you know having handles and levers uh, are you providing a opportunity for people to stand and work uh you know pace for place for meditation or worship so these are the small things you know that make people come together make people understand that you know they are accepted uh whatever be, be their background you know diversity is celebrated it's not just you know a uh, slogan written on the wall and of course uh, you know uh, we have already spoken about how company culture plays the most important role you know a culture that promotes innovation empowerment respect for individual collaboration dni will automatically find people finding ways to connect include and work together you don't have uh, to have initiatives the leaders will walk the talk process and systems will support initiatives around such areas it will become a self sustaining movement as the culture itself will drive changes at all levels so efforts will be bottom up and top down to make the organization a much more richer and vibrant organization yeah so you have answered my question very lucidly so thank you so much um sanjeev we have reached the end of today's podcast do you have any message for our listeners our listeners would be delighted to hear it from you also our audience might want to stay in touch with you post this podcast so it would be great if you could tell them how they can reach out to you uh so uh, my message is you know always start from fundamental and the fundamentals of humanity is all human beings are equal yeah. you, if you start from that fundamental and open yourself to all human beings however they are wherever they are from whatever their background just open yourself and everything else will follow it's as simple as that yeah that's a beautiful message if you if you want to get in touch with me i think uh, you can drop me a mail i i would share my emails uh, with sanjeevni and you can 
drop me a message. I'm on LinkedIn, so you can reach out to me on LinkedIn also. I would be very, very interested to hear your views on this topic. And of course, if you are interested in hearing my views or sharing something that you have with me, I would be more than happy to do so. Wonderful. It's been a pleasure to have you as our guest today. Your insights and expertise have been invaluable and uh, we are grateful for the time you've taken to share your knowledge with our listeners. So thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much for uh, bringing me to this particular podcast. By the way, this is my first. So I'm uh, getting more techno savvy. <laughs> Absolutely. A pleasure. It's great to have you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. Please do subscribe to Vantage HR Influencers Podcast on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and our YouTube channel for new episodes.